I launched Act for America because I realized we must come together to mobilize the nation, to educate the nation, to make a difference. And at this point of my presentation, I want to move about why I'm so concerned about the education system in our country and what's happening, how the radicals right now are trying to brainwash the children in our country. And this is why we are seeing a rise of homegrown terrorism. People wonder, how can we in the last two years have arrested over 75 homegrown terrorists, all Muslims, either born into the Islamic faith or have converted to Islam, trying to attack United States or carry terrorist attacks against America? Of over 75 homegrown terrorists. How did this happen? How did these good people, good Americans, some of them born as Baptists and raised as Baptists like Bledsoe here in Nashville, how can these people become so radicalized to the point where they are hating our country so much they are willing to die to kill Americans? And I'm going to shift right now as to what's happening in this country in education. We talked a lot, about, a lot today about Sharia and the threat of Sharia in our court system. What's happening militarily. We know that they want to attack us. We know they are advancing Sharia and what Sharia is all about. But here is what's happening on the educational level and how they are trying to change our society culturally from within in order to destroy our society. And I'm going to begin with what's happening on college campuses with the infiltration of our country. I call our universities right now occupied territories. People ask me, what's happening with the universities, especially if you have a child in, your, in a university? People in the heartland pinch pennies, save their money, eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches so they can send their children to college to get an education, to have the American dream, only to find out they're sending them to the lion's den. The children come back home, they are completely changed, they loathe America, they do not like America, they're apologizing for America, and you wonder what happened to my children. Here's what happened to your children. You see, there is an Islamic agenda that has been in operation for a very long time. And you have heard today the Muslim Brotherhood mentioned and a lecture about the Muslim Brotherhood. What's been happening with the universities, with the education system, is because of the oil wealth in the Middle East, the Muslims have been able to pour millions of dollars into our universities, setting up Middle East study department, a political science department, and appointing Arab professors who are anti-America and anti-Israel, who are brainwashing our students into believing America is bad, Israel is evil, and uh, we've got, you know, they are embarrassed and apologizing for the country. Here is the extent of the Saudi peddling that has taken place in our country. King Fahad of Saudi Arabia has donated $20 million to set up a Middle East study department at the University of Arkansas. $5 million donated to Berkeley's Middle East, uh, Middle East department from two Saudi sheikhs linked to Al-Qaeda. Harvard received $22.5 million. $28.1 million went to Georgetown. $11 million went to Cornell. Five million went to MIT, 1.5 million to Texas A&M, 1 million to Princeton. Rutgers received 5 million share endowment, as did Columbia, who tried to lie to conceal the source of the fund. Other recipients of Saudi tainted monies include UC Santa Barbara, John Hopkins University, Rice University, American University, University of Chicago, USC, UCLA, Duke University, Syracuse University, Howard University, and many, many others. I can go on and on, you get the picture. From the Ivy League to the community colleges and everything in between, we pump the gas and they pump poison into the hearts and minds of our future generation. And this is why we must become energy independent and cut off the money thing to the Saudi. The way they're doing it is they're using a loophole called Title VI program, which was started by our government after World War II to educate American students about foreign cultures and foreign languages so they may be an asset to our country, especially those who want to get into the diplomatic field and work for the State Department. This is how they are able to get this money into our universities. And this is why, when you look at the news and the media and the mainstream media and you think to yourself, why is the media so biased? Why can't they see what we see? The reason why is because for the last 16 years, all these students graduating out of our Ivy League colleges who have been fed a steady diet of resentment against America and against Israel are today the bureau chiefs, the news writers, the news anchors, the news reporters who are reporting on these things. We shouldn't be surprised. They are the opinion shapers and makers. 
unfortunately they do not realize how they get to this point of thinking this way. The problem does not stop there. The radical Islamic agenda in the country thought the strategy worked so well on college campus, why wait until the kids get to college? Why don't we start educating the children when they are in middle school? So the Council on Islamic Education started advising America's book publishers on how to portray Islam in public schools. They started uh, uh, consulting with Houghton Mifflin and McGraw-Hill and Random House who write the social studies books and the history books on how to teach Islam in the public school system. They're doing exactly what Hitler did. What did Hitler say? What did Hitler do? Give me the children. I'll change society in 10 years. And for those of you who have been watching what's happening, the attitude of the youth of America against America, you are seeing the results of years of education, of the radical agenda happening in our educational system, and years of apathy on our part, sitting on the sidelines and not paying attention how we're losing our universities and our schools. Here's what's happening with the public school system. They started now teaching a course on Islam in seventh grade. The course is a three-week course where Johnny and Sally have to adopt Muslim names, become Muslims for three weeks, memorize and recite verses from the Quran, fast for Ramadan if they can for one day to experience what it's like to be a Muslim, and then go to a mosque on a field trip. Here's what the course says. You know, before when I would speak about these things, people would say to me, absolutely baloney, this could not be happening. We have separation and church, of state, church, state, church and state in this country. So I decided there is nothing like show and tell. So here is the course. It is the course of Islam. So here's how the course started. And before I start, by the way, don't get me wrong. I want my children to be educated about Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam. I want my kids to get an all-rounded education about all religions. But let me do the nitty-gritty at home in my own home when I want to teach them about what my kids want to learn. So here's how the course starts. The course starts with the teacher giving instructions to the students about the class. From the beginning, you and your classmates will become Muslims. You will be a member of a caravan. The teacher instructions continue. Dressing as, Muslim, as a Muslim and trying to be involved will increase your learning and enjoyment. Finally, trying your best in all tasks will guarantee you an excellent grade and a more enjoyable time. The teacher is already dangling the great carrot in front of the children. Here are the list of Islamic names that the children have to choose from. Abdullah, Khalid, Hassan, Hamza, Ibrahim, Arafat, Kharija, Maryam, Noor, Amina, etc. Here are what they called wisdom cards, which is exercise cards that the children have to study at school, just like they study with math cards or whatever, in order for them to understand their lessons. This card that I'm going to use as an example in particular, and there's many of them pages upon pages, but it talks about jihad, because jihad has become a word that we are all very familiar with. We have heard a lot, because every terrorist that either blew himself up or committed suicide or martyrdom or uh, w w did a video of his last rite before he blows himself up, he talks about jihad fi sabilillah. He is dying in the path of Allah. Here's what they're teaching our students about jihad. A jihad is a struggle by Muslims against oppression, invasion, and injustice. This is a fact card. Now, if these words sound familiar to you, it's because they are the talking points of Al-Qaeda and the Palestinian Authority and Hamas or whatever, every time they talk about why they're fighting the West, why they're fighting America, they are fighting injustice, they are fighting oppression, they are fighting invasion. Our children in seventh grade in public schools in the United States right now are being taught the talking points of our enemies as facts in our public schools and we the taxpayers are paying for it. And by the way, the word jihad is mentioned in the Quran 40 times, 36 times out of 40, as a war, as a holy war against the infidels to either kill them or subjugate them. So the kids are taught flat lies. And here's a kick or some of you will appreciate, especially, it's amazing that we're doing this at church. 
Here is the Shahada or the Islamic salvation prayer when uh, somebody wants to convert to Islam and wants to become a Muslim. This is what they say. It is the equivalent to uh, the Christian prayer of I accept Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior, etc. Here's what the kids have to analyze in the classroom. They have to analyze this prayer. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. Praise be to Allah, Lord of creation, the compassionate, the merciful, King of judgment day. You alone we worship and to you alone we pray for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored, not of those who have incurred your wrath, which is the Jews, nor of those who have gone astray, which is the atheists and the Christians. Can you imagine if the pastor here goes to a school, to a public school, and says, hey y'all, we're going to study the Bible for three weeks. You are going to have Judeo-Christian names like Michael and Sarah, and we're going to memorize and recite verses from the Bible, and you're going to try to fast for one day to experience Good Friday or Yom Kippur, so you'll know what it's like to, to come from that heritage, and then you're going to come on Sunday to church service to experience what it's like to be a Muslim. Can you imagine what would happen to that pastor? Hell will break loose. The ACLU will scream up in arms. Again, I am all for at religious education at school. But this is indoctrination and it's unacceptable. This is exactly why we have separation between church and state. Do not mix the two together. Here is some of the exercises in the class as well. Become a Muslim warrior during the Crusades or during an ancient Jihad. Explain weapons, tactics, etc. Excuse me? This is a class exercise? And we are sitting here being, everybody is afraid to say anything lest we offend somebody? I believe political correctness needs to be thrown in the garbage where it belongs and start calling the spade a spade. <laughs> what made America great is people like us who came from all over the world to become Americans. Your great grandparents, your grandparents, your parents, or yourself if you are a first generation immigrant like me. We are a melting pot. If you look across this room, you'll see a tapestry of different colors, different backgrounds, different heritage, different religion, different everything. But we came all together here to be Americans. So we can love this country. So we can be free. We have all our shortcomings. No country is great. But we all work together and come together to make sure we protect and we secure this country and keep it as a beacon of light to those people coming from the rest of the world so they can enjoy what we all enjoyed, whether we are a first generation immigrant or not. And I say to those people who criticize America, who hate America, who think so ill of America, if America is so bad, by all means, we'll give you a one-way ticket and go out and go to whatever country you choose and leave it to us. <laughs> no one is perfect. We all have our shortcomings. But we all have to take care of our home and our family. And that's the people of the United States and this great country that our founding fathers have set up for us. People come here speaking different languages, different nationalities. I am sick and tired when I hear people say, I'm an African American and I'm a Japanese American and I'm Italian American. I am nothing but an American. And unless we get back to that point, we're going to lose our country. And while I'm on a roll, English is the official language of the United States and shall remain so.